Let's say I really love this chunky train. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Fashion Design with Hannah. I hope you're enjoying the holidays as much as I enjoyed the small break I gave myself. But let's get back into the world of fashion design. Today we will be going over trend research. This is a major portion of fashion design. If you are one of the few who has plenty of money and can design and make whatever they want, good for you. However, if you're like most of us in the fashion design industry, you will be researching what all is going on in the market, what has everyone else designed, and probably knocking some things off. So let's head on over to the original source of trend research, magazines. So as I'm sure all of you are aware, Vogue and Elle are two major magazines that have been around for quite some time. I will show you a good example of an early version of Vogue and Elle. Now let me tell you, Vogue and Elle both used to be major magazines. We're talking about bigger than all three of these magazines combined. But due to content and budget cuts, both due to quarantine and general downtrend in magazine buying, they are now quite thin. They also do have digital content as well, and that makes it a little bit more sustainable. I'm sure some of you don't have magazines or physical subscriptions to things because of it not being sustainable. I would also like to think that's the main reason. But let's be honest, budget does talk, and I was definitely a broke college student once and could not afford these. <laughs> There also was an expensive magazine store that we were directed to go to as an FIT student and their thick magazines that were solely dedicated to fashion design and very thick. Uh, those ones were like a good $30. So that would be my magazine for the semester. I would use it as much as possible and probably take pictures or scans of everything and then put those into my projects if I used them. So as we'll look into October and November of L and November of Vogue because my magazine subscriptions came late so um, I apparently just didn't get October of Vogue but I got October of L with a cover of Blackpink, hell yeah, and I got November as well. So with trend research, you really try and block off what these magazines or whatever sort of thing you're looking into, whether it be digital or physical, and you get organized. I would suggest something like page markers. That's right, colorful things that I like. Anywho, I chose a main marker color that I put to the outer side of the magazine as my general, here's a style that they put in. Then I chose another color to represent the issue's trend reports, if they had any. As you can see, there are a lot of trends and designs being presented in L, both in October and in November. But it appears as if Vogue now does a little bit more articles as there are less markers in here. So a common trend with these major magazines is that they'll put their best ads forward, aka usually a luxury brand. So as you'll see here, we have NG Studio Paris on the left, and on the right we have Louis Vuitton. Now it's great to even look into the trends when they're posted for actually something else, like accessories, because they still try and be trend right in the fashion that they present on the page along with the accessories. Giorgio Armani, another heavy hitter name. Um, I did notice that there are some more winter florals being presented. Also, a somewhat lovely shade of purple that ranges from actually kind of the color of my markers all the way to a little bit more of a purple pink. There are also still major volume moments going on in the industry oversized things like the overall piece usually outerwear is going to be super oversized sleeves tend to be a big thing along with shoulders now what's interesting that i noticed is that there tends to be major sleeve shoulder and collar moments during election years i think it's to do with the correlation between women being in the workplace and it representing power but 
who knows? You can look into that as much as you want. Another great example of the major volume moments, major sleeves, major whatever you want to call this because it's not a bustle. It's going out in the front of her dress. <laughs> and here again, we'll see major sleeves, major shoulders, major collar, and suits. That's the other part, the suits tend to be a part of election years. And black pink, and if I had the money and the cool factor to wear this, I would. Also note that as we're coming closer to the holiday season, more shine trends will be represented. Now, shine trends for the holidays tend to be as groundbreaking as florals for spring, but they do come in different varieties. Now, if you'll notice, this is more of a jeweled or rhinestone or bedazzled look if you want to really cheapen this $7,000 top. We do still have more of the mesh or sheer trends going on. This is a little bit more like spacer mesh, which looks a lot wider in its little interior part of the mesh mixed with regular mesh. Oh, and what's this? Volume on the sleeves, still going on and volume in the skirt. Voluminous sleeves. Now I have seen more of 60s trends coming back, whether it be with like the Peter Pan collar, paisleys, some interesting sleeve choices that aren't just voluminous in a certain area. Giant double-breasted collar slash closure. Kind of a 60s trend here with the double dress, one that's sleeveless and one that has nice bell sleeves to it. Volume at the sleeves volume at the color. Now even though you can't really see it all the way, volume at the sleeve. Gasp! Also love this coat. This tweed looks amazing. And let's see, it's only $2,095. I'll buy five! Oversized vest goes fully over the shoulders. Volume! Okay, so that's what I did for looking at the individual styles. And besides just marking the trends or styles that you see or the trend reports, it's great to have another color. So that way you can make small notes to yourself, even if you don't quite remember until you see the page. Now, my note for here is that Dior had a fall 2020 collection that was actually filmed as a short film and presented online. So they wanted it to be pandemic friendly and that is one of the ways that you can move on with your life. Now as I was saying earlier, I did notice a purple color all the way to this lovely fuchsia. Now I'll notice that as well. So you see they have a variety of items that are offered in that hue that show you trends. And what's great in your trend research if you are researching for your portfolio is to show accessories that go with your clothing even if it's just taking an image, popping it in, so that way it shows that you know how to merchandise and that things go together. So what they're also reporting for accessories is something that you can still look into because accessories bounce off of clothing trends. Over the last few years, there have been more sporty or athletic or athleisure trends that have been going on, however you'd like to view that, and the accessories are fully reflecting that. Now it's also great that if you like the accessories, you can add them in, but you can also be inspired by them. And let's say I love this chunky chain that's here. I can add that to a belt that's on an oversized coat that I love and make it a fabulous look. Now here is where I was talking about the 60s trend. You do see some that's looking more mod. Now I would say that that is also from cultural influences like, oh, I don't know, a little show called The Queen's Gambit. If you haven't heard of it, it's on Netflix and I highly recommend it. Absolute yes for watching on Netflix. So you have the mod influence with the prints going on. You have these very interesting sunglasses, which have kind of built off of the tiny sunglass trend in recent years. You do see your shift dress and A-line dress coming back along with an A-line skirt. Cool mod gloves. You have your leopard print and you have some nice bell sleeves here as well. Of course, these are all modern takes on the 60s, but designs come and go and are usually inspired by different decades. You'll see the trends. And yes, more 60s, but this is starting to go into the print overload. I will say that I have noticed more paisleys as well, besides these cool mod designs that are a little bit more geometric or surreal. This one is based off kind of like a thermal view on people, which I find very interesting. It kind of reminds me of a peacock print. So that's a very interesting take. It's by Christopher Kane. Obviously major 60s moment, bell-bottom pants. That's some fringe and mesh and 
all the fun combos. Again, more bell bottoms, kind of going with the lighter brown accessories. Now this Isabelle Morant bag has an interesting kind of oversized paisley. I like that, that's a, that's a fun print. And then we still have more play on sheer. So that was October. Oh, speaking of the Queen's Gambit, I open up October and here is the actress who plays the main character in the Queen's Gambit. Right, so again, fun voluminous sleeve thing. Now, as I was saying earlier about the accessories trends page and the accessory ads, you can look into the makeup ads as well because they try and be up to date with the styles that they present on their models. Also, if you are still learning to sketch, these make great figure drawings and sometimes it's great to just have it in person rather than on a screen to learn how to sketch because that way, if you're having issues, you can just start by tracing the face and go from there. Now with Saint Laurent YSO, you do have the faux leather here on both the top and leggings. <clears throat> Volume. This is the purple I was talking about. My marker is a little bit in between this and what was shown on the other page. For knitwear, it's great when you can see a close-up like this so you can see what kind of stitch is on trend as well. This is just going to be a rib turtleneck play on sheer. Wait for it. What's this size spy with my little eye? Volume! Guess what? This is a collar! This is Givenchy Fall 2020 oversized coat, oversized pants. And it's always interesting to see what the trends are more at the fast fashion or contemporary level because this is for Kohl's and Kohl's actually had an ad out in L. This is for the Boss Babe and L collaboration. So you can sometimes still see trends at the fast fashion level as presented in magazines and not online. So usually online is the way to go as fast fashion is fast and online is much faster than in print. Here we go again. We have some play on sheer. This is a sheer dress overlay that is worn over pants that are nice, big, voluminous pants. I can't quite tell if these are bell bottoms, but they just look like oversized pants. This is going to be play with sheer, but with layered sheerness, which that's always a design element where you can gradiate between how much is being revealed and how much is being hidden. Sheerness is a great way to play with that. Can't quite tell you how luminous this dress is, but hey, it almost matches my shirt. That's fun. Paisley, as I was telling you. Spacer mesh, aka kind of a play on sheer. This one is going to be Dolce & Gabbana, and this one is Ralph Lauren. Ah ha 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 ha. Very cute though. This is a color that works very well on many skin tones. This is almost kind of a thing. The faux leather is being represented again here, like what was shown with YSL in the beginning in their ad. That is just kind of a, a fall classic. I don't know if you want to consider that a trend. Again, it's like florals in spring, but also volume. You know how big this skirt probably is when she stands up? Big. And what did I tell you? Play on sheer. This is Dior. And I love what they did for the design that's on the mesh, seeing as it's only covering certain parts, but hey, she's wearing stuff underneath it as well, as I'm sure they'd expect you to be wearing it. I really love what they did with the surface design on the mesh that is pretty unique and definitely expensive. It's so expensive that they didn't even list the price. I kind of like this collar moment that they have going on. It's a little bit different with the buttons that they chose. Now y'all don't actually need to know designers in real life, but it's, it's kind of fun for a mental reference. Voluminous sleeve and voluminous shoulder put together. Now you can't quite tell until you look very closely at this, but these are actually palettes all over the design. And guess what? It's a play on sheer because you can actually somewhat see underneath it with the right light. All right, who can say this with me? Voluminous sleeves. And look at that. Big old shoulders. Does anyone feel like 80s vibe? Now here's an example of bucking the trends, but doing it right. These look amazing. I also love what Charles Jeffrey Loverboy did here with this print. 
it is almost like a watercolor floral feels kind of underwater voluminous leaves voluminous leaves all right i think i've seen enough fringe i would add to the trend list as well and also look at this very cool and interesting kind of paisley feather floral-ish print it's a nice abstract voluminous sleeve now you may think that this is a page dedicated to bicycles but you can still see the fashion here we got your suit jacket which i would never i would never wear any of these styles biking but somehow they do or this one's just posing next to a bike but I'm jealous of the bike and the outfit. Here we have some great stripe combos, along with this lovely print going on right here. It's kind of abstracted, but I like it. And to prove my point, fashion, but make it politics. As I'm sure everyone is very well aware, this is an election year, and with an election year, you do have a focus on the political fashion, and as you have more female representation in politics, you do start to see more of the business attire coming about. But this article is actually about how female politicians are changing the appearance of what female politicians are looking like wearing color, going out in public, that's something that's not a suit. Gasp! Now, as I was saying, the accessory pages are still great for clothing trends because look at these really cool plaids. Definitely some great inspiration for the season. Also, can you say 60s? Shirling, as what tends to come around with the fall, along with other animal influences like for sporty trends with the puffer pieces over here and some nice bright colors really like this sign language mask this one is by the Weddell art collective now this is a fun placement print by max hosa africa it has this interesting trim that goes all the way around the edges and now feast your eyes trend reports we have dark jewel tones hot fuzz aka <laughs> fur tough stuff so you have your leather again leather animal stuff like fur and shirling fall staples same with plaids but these are some nice oversized coats i love this oversized plaid that's on this bodysuit here are some denim trends if you're looking for those and that would be it for the november issue of l now we can check out the difference here with vogue so right up front we had the YSL ad that was from the L magazine along with the Celine outfit which I love the print on this. It's almost like a paisley mixed with a snake print. Some play on sheer with Fendi. Some beautiful fringe work onto mesh or lace. It's a nice big collared jacket and shirt moment. If you don't like volume that much, but you want to make it seem like there's volume, you can cinch in different parts. As you see with this corset and a beautiful floral embroidered mesh. Now here is the Michael Kors shine trend, but this picture isn't close up enough to tell what it is exactly. It might be a metallic thread or it might be mini sequins, which I'm kind of thinking are probably sequins, even though you can't see them very well. The luminous leaves. Rosario Dawson in this amazing print. Now a classic queen of the runway is Naomi Campbell and she is rocking these looks. Big shoulder moment. Major sequins. Now let's get a close-up of those sequins. This is Valentino Haute Couture and it looks fabulous. The leather. Major sleeves. We have some Christian Dior here, casually photographed in southern Italy. And what I don't like, I don't know why they did this, is they showcased Bella Hadid in practically the rest of the pages. Oh gasp, it's Bella Hadid again, but with a different wig. Here is a great example though of how you can merchandise your collection or put together a mood board is showing household items that go with it especially in the color palette that you want to do for your collection oh look it's bella hadid again in a different wig 
though this style is pretty cool. I do like their abstract printing that they did on it and the asymmetrical hem. It does look very fresh. Now, if you think I had you fooled, I just wanted you to know this is Bella Hadid again. And if you would like a busy mood or a trend page, a great way to set it up is a grid so that way it declutters the images for your mind or the buyer's mind. Now for trend reports, they had two. Here's one, enjoy. Here's the other one. And this isn't quite a trend report. It's really just looking at the runways and the notes they did on them. So if you're a broke college student and you want a magazine subscription, I'm gonna have to say, go with Elle. They show you more fashion. All right, read it and weep. There's your October and November review. I do have both of the December issues of Vogue and Elle covering Terry Styles and Zendaya. I will be doing that in a further review. Alas, I do not have enough time for this episode. And thankfully, these actually came on time. Isn't that just wonderful when things work out? And that would be our trend review for this time. I do plan on keeping up the trend reviews as long as I have these, so stay tuned for that. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new here and feel like doing so, feel free to subscribe. It helps out the channel and it helps other people to find it as well. This is more of a spacer mesh, so it's a little bit wider in its 